call this meeting to order the Whiteley Select Board, uh, 6 to 5 p.m. The first order of business are the meeting minutes from March 28th. Um, does anyone have any comments? No. No comments. No comments. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The vendor and payroll warrant are included. Does anyone have comments no. on those? I'll move to approve those. We, no, don't, need we don't need to. No, we don't. No. Um, public comments. Fine. So now it's time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. So, yes, yes. please feel free to come up to the table here so okay. we, can, we can get a good look at you and then you don't have to shout so much. And, and I'll tell us who you are. Sure. Such. Um, so my name is Colette Alanik. This is my husband, Chris Alanik, Sir Charlie. Um, and I apologize for my ignorance about any of this. This is my first public board that I have ever experienced. Oh, okay. Um, Sounds like a future candidate. Yeah. Right? I Would you be willing to take out papers? <laughs> just sign here. No one just address. address. Yeah. Your address. Uh, we're at 21 Laurel Mountain Road, <laughs> oh. and we are here um, to request the dangerous dog hearing. Mm. Um, we have, did we say six statements? We have six statements from various residents. Um, I've also reached out to the Franklin County Sheriff's Office to get uh, copies of all of the trespass orders that people have taken out against uh, the, the individual in question. and. My understanding is that there's one that's still processing. There are six currently, and there are more that have been seriously inquired about and intend to follow through yeah. probably within the next couple of weeks. So there's a person and a dog so, that are a, a, like a pair? Yes. Okay. So um, this, am I allowed to use this person's name? I think first names are okay. For okay. Um, there's been a woman, Denise, who lives nearby us who has been walking with her dog for the last year. Um, for us, this began almost exactly a year ago with the dog uh, charging into our yard, which is a quarter mile away from any private property, um, and charging our seven-year-old son who was standing in the field like this as Denise is yelling to him from the other side of the field, you're okay, you're fine, he's and, fine. And is this the, your son here? No, this is uh, a seven-year-old oh, okay. who was outside playing by himself because of our very private desire. Um, and we had already asked her once not to come on the property. So after, and she acknowledged after some debate about it, uh, she acknowledged that it was inappropriate for young property uninvited. Um, and so after that incident, we contacted the police who recommended we get a trespass order, which we did. Um, and she proceeded to come on our property a number of times afterward, um, which involved both Whitby police and state police. And this has been the story for pretty much every neighbor that we have. This extends into other towns. Um, there's two. When, when you say this is the story with pretty much every neighbor, meaning they're experiencing the same thing that you are, yeah. not they're coming into your yard yeah. with their dogs. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to be, I wanted to be clear about Thanks. that, right? Uh, yes, uh, literally every neighbor near us has no trespassing signs that have been put up simply because of this woman and her dog and the lack of boundaries and that she can't control the dog, that she either loses control of it or more recently, she has just been letting the leash go, not not by it being pulled out of her hand, not absent-mindedly letting the leash go. I've witnessed her on more than one occasion, just drop the leash and the dog wanders into everyone's yard and she'll follow the dog and then the dog will go one way and she'll go another. She makes no attempt to actually retrieve the dog. Um, the dog has most, re most recently bit me on Friday, which was what I would define as a mild bite, but did break the skin in three spots um, and was very honestly terrifying. I I don't think I've ever been scared as an adult. And I used to be a firefighter and an EMT and I've run into burning buildings and not once have I ever been this scared. Um, I had my kids with me who were luckily in the car when this happened, but I cannot imagine what it would have been like if it was one of them. And so us, and then collectively with our neighbors, 
um, are asking to have a hearing about this because none of us feel safe in our yards. And we've all pursued this to the extent that it can be pursued. And this is where we're ending up. Um, and this is just within the last three days, we gathered this much information. We would be casting a farther net to reach out to people that I know have also had the same experience with her mm -hmm. and the dog um, to good. have more support for everyone's yeah. shared experience. Yeah. So at this point, you're asking for, just to get the terminology right here, yeah. a dangerous dog hearing? Yes. Yeah. OK. And that is a purview of the select board to hold that kind of hearing? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, right now, it's you asking for it. You suspect that there might be other people who might join in if you were to. I. You tell me what's needed. Oh, okay. No, I'm. I, I was just wondering. I was just wondering if, if it's like if it's like a whole bunch of people. Yes. Like officially, right now, yeah. it's it's you two. I feel well, like it's you us three. acting as representatives yes. of the community. Yes, am I allowed to speak as a member of the select board who's had a similar experience? I was going to say, okay, <laughs> that, those are my main questions. Next, I was going to go to you two, so why don't you go and then... Um, she's chosen your neighborhood at the moment. Yes. Uh, we've certainly had experience with Denise and with her dog in our yard. Um, she seems very nice. She's very chatty. She has very few boundaries. She doesn't understand. And the dog... I was a little frightened of as well. Uh, we have dogs, and she said, "My dog just wants to play with your dogs," and I and it's he's an un, unfixed male. Yes. And I knelt down, and he and I went, "Okay, not ever getting near that dog again." Yeah. Right. Right. And I and a lot of the people in our neighborhood have had the same experience up and down Conway Road, including her coming into people's homes yeah. and them finding her yeah. sitting in their living room. Correct. Which has been more so, than one person. You know, I would like to get her help, so um, she... but I would also like her not to have a dog that people with young children or anybody would be afraid of. I don't know what happens at a dangerous dog hearing or afterwards, um, but our understanding uh, from speaking with the animal control officer and the police department is that they are unable to do anything without direct orders from the select board, but that they would be able to remove the dog from the house if you guys were to mm -hmm. deem that necessary. Um, I would um, imagine she could then get another pet. Right. And that was that was what we were also requesting. I, ideally, it would be a remove the current dog from the household and then ban them from getting a license for another dog of a similar size. Yeah. I, 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 I myself have not ever had to run a dangerous dog hearing, so I'd have to kind of look into what is it. Right. What is it we right. can impose and what is it we can just suggest? And, and sometimes. If, if the latter will work, <laughs> the right. chamber yeah. isn't needed, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add anything, Fred? No. no just... Based on what I've um, seen and been supplied to by an attorney, right. uh, the dog statute states that the select board can put restrictions on the dog, such as if it leaves the property, it has to be muzzled with a specific okay. leash that's only so long. Um, or you can also say this dog needs to be removed from the home. Okay. Okay. Well, that would come up at the hearing. What right. what our options are? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Um. But well, do you have any objections to, to scheduling? No, I just just kind of explain what what is required. Yeah. What is the next to, step? Well. Um. Well, I think I would want to have a conversation with the animal control officer. Obviously, there's going to be due process rights for yeah. That's for the individual and the dog that was talking about. Um. Yeah. So we we'll want to make sure that you know. All of those due process rights are followed, um, but if that's if that's like what the board wants to do, then we will look mm -hmm. into it, have yeah. a conversation with the animal control officer, and then okay, yeah, let's look into the next steps then. Denise herself, in my experience with her, as I said, does seem pretty harmless, um, but right. she is unable to control the dog. Right. Yeah. And the question of mental health concern, of yeah. which there have been treatment for, but. Yeah. More back to square one. Yeah, right. It's 
she's not fighting people the dog is <laughs> so i would hope that removing the dog would also alleviate her wandering in the neighborhood because she does not go without the dog mm. Mm. she so does the theory being if she the... rides her bike she right, rides her right. bike and she does walk far without the dog i haven't encountered anyone who has had her on their property without the dog mm. Mm. she does ride her bike but like i said i have not but trespassing on other people's property is typically because of, I'm following the dog. Right, whether that I had to get my dog. Or yeah. whether that emboldens her to go and look at people's windows and enter people's houses or trespass. Yeah. And what then if, she also comes up with other excuses. She'll have the dog and she'll say, Oh, I'm looking for my cat. Oh, I lost my wife. It's been a variety of different stories over the last year. I, I feel for her, and in our neighborhood, we just try to keep a little net around her so that she doesn't hurt herself, but the dog is concerned. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All righty. Um, is there any other um, public comment on uh, items not listed on the agenda? I'm looking out in... Uh, Zoom land, there's someone named Helena. Uh, I think Chris is from the recorder. You're still a member of the public. You get to, yeah, you man. can comment if you want. I'm good, thank you. Oh, okay. Hi, Helena, do you have anything for public comment? Uh, well, we're, we're just showing up at the meeting today to support Colette and Chris. Um, we're in the same neighborhood and have had encounters with um denise and her dog that were really um frightening so okay. it sounds like you know i know everyone in the town is familiar and um i was hoping to hear you know what the select board's guidance is for us at this juncture i mean it's sort of a rapidly changing i mean not rapidly but it's you know it's <laughs> changing um because yeah. you know more more uh charges are kind of pending and so mm -hmm. I I don't know what the current guidance would be for the neighborhood and what our options are so I was curious to ask the board for their input on that oh okay um well before you got on we basically did listen uh to the Atlantics and um said let's take the next steps for the hearing okay I'm sorry I missed that um, yeah oh that's okay that's okay um, and uh, I don't know that we had any sage advice other than we need to look into what it is the, the select board can um, impose. And right. I understand there's, there, and there are there are things we can impose on a dog owner. Um, right. and we to, but we want to make sure that we take care of due process for um, for the person right. um, as well. And um, so. I, uh, my only not. advice would be take all appropriate precautions yes, to yeah, be cautious. ensure your safety and the safety of your family and your pets. Yeah, I mean, it's like we're looking at like putting up fencing and locking doors. It's just sort of like mm. pretty extreme, like extreme measures to just keep one person to obey the law, like don't trespass. Mm. Expensive yeah, yeah. and you know it's expensive and it changes the feel of the neighborhood when everyone kind of puts mm -hmm. up fences and security stuff. Yeah, so, you know, it's no, kind of no, live no. in the country is to not worry about stuff like that. I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep us posted. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Hey, stay for the rest of the show. <laughs> it's a must see TV. Yeah. We okay. won't mind if you go like make dinner and stuff and just listen. And Shall I just say it. Slater? Yeah. We'll okay. Have... I will listen. I will be glad to listen. Thank you for that invite. And nice to see everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Bye. as promised, next item scheduled appointment. I'd like to say we've oh, got some, some visitors. But I think I think JP is on the yeah, but I'm just saying well one of the visitors is the next schedule appointment. Okay. So, okay, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine, but definitely. All right. I'll I will 
not do the rest of the ARIA on the Energy Committee. But our next scheduled appointment is with the Wake the Energy Committee to talk about indicative pricing for the Municipal Electricity Aggregation Program and to authorize signatory for future contracts. So, Nat, would you like to? You can have a seat up there if you like. Sure. So, I'm Nat Fortune, 152 West Brent Road, and I'm here uh, wearing the hat of a member of the Energy Committee. And uh, last meeting, for anybody who uh, missed it, we talked about how the municipal aggregation for electricity, which essentially means that the town purchases electricity on behalf of the residents. And so the Eversource bill that you get, part of what you pay for is for Eversource utility service, you know, providing, delivering electricity to your house, maintaining the lines and the like. Part of it, is a payment for the electricity you use and parts for everything else. Um, before three years ago, uh, most people got their like had Eversource go out and buy their electricity for them. Um, and we decided that if as a town and teaming together with another 14, 15 towns in, in Franklin, Hampshire County, if we could get uh, better pricing, uh, a year-to-year -year average, and uh, cleaner electricity than we would do so. Um, and when we started out, the con current contract goes through the end of this year, and the price has been fixed since January first of three years ago at about nine nine and a half cents or so. Um, and although we expected. Um, that that price would be just on average every year better than uh, what you would get if you had a resource going out and buying that electricity instead of the town. It's actually been better both summer and winter, right? The winter prices are usually more expensive, the summer are cheaper. But every month since we've had that, uh, we've been able to offer the town people savings on, on their electricity and uh, cleaner in terms of carbon emissions as well. Uh, when we started out, we were only about a tenth of a cent of that, you know, the first three months, and then we were three cents more. And then most recently we've been- Three cents less. Yeah, three cents less. Three cents less, sorry. And more recently, um, we've been on nine and a half cents and, and the electricity has been the 20, 30 cent range. Um, well, this contract is coming to an end the end of this year. And throughout the rest of this year, we know that we'll be again, still cheaper. Um, and we looking at, we've gotten, since I last met, we've gotten indicative price. Pricing that energy suppliers are willing to provide were we to buy that day. Of course, so we can change some, uh, and that was on the 10. And that pricing was closer to 14 cents. All right, so that's a step up from nine, but it's been cheaper for three years and you know nearly three years and three months. Um, and the goal would be to have that cheaper on a yearly average than again. Their advice, it's not a guarantee you can do. The best we can do is anticipate what the next six months would be for every source because they go out and buy their electricity. They change their price six times, you know, twice a year, and they buy some of the electricity a year in advance and some six months in advance for that. So we can predict the winter pricing at 14 cents would be still expect that to be cheaper than if you had a ever source going out and buying it. Beyond that, of course, um, it's it's a question. Uh, the advice from our aggregator, the colonial power that does this work for us of going out and finding bids is to look for a two to three year contract, right? Um, the one year contracts are actually more expensive and two and three are not very different in terms of the pricing. Um, and so based on what we see um, at the time of actionable pricing, we, we would, the recommendation would be either to go for a two or a three year contract. And they're recommending that we do go forward at this pricing, even though it is more than what we've been paying up to them. Um, and so what we need from the select board is authorization to continue in this program 
by means of authorizing someone to have sign a contract uh, subject to whatever conditions you want to impose on it, right? You can put conditions that say, well, if the price is really 16 cents instead of 14 or something, um, we're not going through that you should wait for pricing later in the year or something like that. Uh, whatever you think is uh, reasonable in that regard. I would say that our backstop in all of this is because unlike other third party aggregators, like the, the town um, does not charge any fee if you want to leave the service at any time and Eversource doesn't charge it. So uh, should there ever be a six month period in which Eversource is cheaper, everybody in the town could, if they wanted to switch over Right for that, and then switch back the next six months when it's when when we're cheaper. You always have that freedom. It's just that it takes a couple of months for that processing to happen. So um, to summarize, the recommendation is at current pricing that the town look to purchase electricity for its residents, continuing the program for anywhere from a two to three year contract. You can let it be whatever is the best deal at the time and in the mind of the uh, person you've authorized to do this, right? Or you might give us specific guidance here, two years unless there's a better price for three or three years unless there's a better price for two um, and some guide rails, right? So this is all, in, in all of these cases, the electricity would continue to be cleaner. Um, and we have some choices as to what we uh, could represent. So the other guidance would be, um, besides the contract, what offerings do we want to make? And typically we make one that is uh, on the cheaper side and one that is 100% clean, new, renewable in Massachusetts re region uh, energy. No, we have three options now and nobody ever chose the middle one, right? So they either wanted the one that was a little bit cheaper and a little bit greener, or they wanted the one that was as green as possible, right? Uh, and so my recommendation to you would be to have us seek out two contracts, and one of which is the 100% the mass recs. Um, that's ones that invest in new renewable sources in our region. And the other would be the one that has does five percent better than is required of suppliers in the state, uh, because there's essentially no difference in pricing. It's less than a tenth of a cent between that and 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 just doing as well. And we've always wanted to be cheaper, a little bit cheaper, and a little bit cleaner. Those two uh, of the six or eight options outlined there mm -hmm. uh, are the ones that, that we would recommend that you uh, authorize the town to participate in. Um, so it's a two-step thing. You have to say, yes, you're authorizing someone to choose a supplier for a certain term. And then there's a decision about what the offerings would be from that supplier. And the only ones the town people seem to be interested in is are the two that I that I outlined. So and, uh, if you want to do this, uh, it would require a vote to authorize a representative of the town. Last time when you did this, you authorized the town administrator, Brian, and I would strongly recommend you do that again with any conditions or guidance that you want to give to Brian. Uh, the meeting would be on the 24th. I think it's like at 1.30. Uh, members of the select board are invited to attend and, and as on energy, but the person who would be authorized at that time, that would be Brian, because once the pricing is given, all 15 towns have to say yes, or it doesn't happen. And they have to say yes within that day, within a couple of hours. Yes, yeah, two hours or something like right. that. So it's better to have your decisions and parameters made ahead of time. Can I ask yes. uh, you to translate yes. for a uh, first time of reading this? Um, v Rex, Mass uh, Class One Rex. Yes, right. So there's. That's right. Okay, so Class One versus. 
class two, class one is better than two. Okay. Math is better than national. Well, how is it better? Uh, class one means that it's a new project or a project within the last, uh, I forget, five to 10 years, 1997, maybe. Okay. Uh, that, that doesn't make sense. Well, okay. I am hesitant to say exactly what date is because I realize I'm here, but I forget. I'll see if I, I but that's okay. new enough that Massachusetts considers it a new project and that it's still being paid off, right? Uh -huh. You know, and that uh, you are contributing to the financing and the profitability of that renewable source of electricity mm -hmm. there. Uh, class two are older ones. For example, if, if a hydro dam was built in 1925, in Massachusetts, and it's still generating electricity. That would be a class two, right? right? It's one where by purchasing it, you aren't adding new capacity, but you are providing funds for its maintenance and continuation <laughs> rather than shutdown. Um, Massachusetts means that this is going to happen in our local economy. It used to mean just Massachusetts. It, it's now more like a circular area that includes parts of New York, parts of New Hampshire, parts of Vermont and Maine, as well as Massachusetts. But it's still all locally connected to our grid um, and is contributing to the uh, reduction in carbon emissions and to the supply, right, in, in the case of peak demand, right? So that it, this, these are sources that could ramp up when there's a demand in a way that ramping up in California or Texas wouldn't help us. So class one is a newer source that we help encouraging new development. Uh, Massachusetts means it's located in this region. Uh, and so uh, the state requires a certain minimum amount uh, from any provider. All right, and, and I don't have that sheet in front of me, but the very smallest one is just, what's the bare minimum you have to do? It's like the bare minimum to meet the housing code, the building code. And then you can do better than the building code, right? Uh, and this says we will do better by purchasing an additional 5% of mass form recs if you pick, if you choose that option. Or we'll do better by purchasing enough that you can say 100% of your electricity comes from a clean renewable source. So when it's in red, the percentage is 100%. Oh. Does that mean it's 100%? Uh, I would need to have a copy of which well, one you're talking about. Uh, to well, I don't know what you're saying. Right. So the title I can translate. Um, the one I'm talking about for. Um, that I'm recommending as that we're recommending as, as the lower end would be the uh, one that says retail supply through purchase of um, mass class on Rex plus 5%. That's on the second page? No, uh, I think it's at the bottom of the bottom first page here. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that one doesn't have, that doesn't have the. Uh... Right. Okay. And so, there's one supplier that's willing to offer for a two month, a two year contract, and one that's willing to offer for a um, three year of indicative pricing. Right? So, like 14.091 is the price okay. for the one that's three years out. Uh, we're expecting three or four more companies to bid when it's actual pricing. Uh, not all companies are willing to give Indic suggest indicative pricing. Uh, and so you should have something that is um, this or better, but not all companies are willing to offer a three-year contract. Okay. Right. So just, just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, almost identical price uh, in that second group where it's National Wind Rex. Yes. Um, that's like 100% clean. That's the other one right, but they're not new and they're not in our grid. Okay. So what oh, you're okay. doing is you are... Okay. Uh, paying for the maintenance of wind farms that are already paid off for, mm. right? But it, they, uh, so it's very inexpensive to add those. And we did do that mm. because there was a, 
astounding price difference between that and yeah. Massachusetts last time. Last time around. That and, time we, around. and we promised that every product, that one of our, starting from day one, we would have something that's cheaper. Right? Yeah. Uh, we believe starting from day one, we'll still have something that's cheaper. Right, and then yeah. anticipate over the course of the year the average will be you know, we can't promise that, and then mm -hmm. people right. are free to leave the contract if they don't right. like it. And the difference is in the fourth significant. That's right, right, right. And so, right. given that it's um, a fraction of a cent, we you know we we thought mm -hmm. let's let's do the one that has make the cheaper one the one that is the one that has a little bit more in Massachusetts new Massachusetts investment okay yeah. um, and so that's one of the ones we're recommending and then the other one that we're recommending which is um, one of the second page yeah and it's about two and a half cents more at the bottom of the second page is the minimum standard plus enough mass class to ones to get you to a hundred percent so that okay. um that's um, the very bottom of the second page, right? So that one is 16.588 cents instead. That's actually a smaller price differential than the first time around. Uh, the first time around, one was like 9.4, the other was 13.6 or something. Um, and so, and we have demand within the town for that. We have no demand for anything that's a half measure, you yeah. know. Um, Can you explain the difference between that and the one that's two above it that has a little dotted line around it where in red, yeah. it says 62 right. plus 38 V red equals 100% for 2024. How is that different from the bottom one? Um, they're the both past one and they're both massive. Right. Um, well, because uh, one of them, is entirely mass class one rights. The other is um, the minimum requirement and then what else is added to that, but you're not changing what say 62% of the electricity is. So that the 62% might not be. That's right, 62% has a requirement for mass class one, but it's not 62% mass class one. Uh, okay. It's a mix of class one and class, class two, two and right. other national. And in fact, that be out of state. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that's that's sort of sixty-two percent of the minimum standard, mm -hmm. and okay. then enough of the class one to bring, to it bring up you to, uh, to, okay. to fill up the difference. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, whereas the cheapest one would be, you start with the minimum. You shave off five percent yeah. of that minimum yeah. to reallocate to class one rights. Okay. All right. So you do uh, a little instead of sixty-two percent, you do uh, fifty-seven percent, right? Of, of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that okay. has some renewable in it, but it's not by any means entire. Okay. And the difference between the two is. The, between those particular two, yes, is only about a, oh, we lost, sorry. Yeah, it's it's slightly it's more than a cent. Yeah. And right. then, right, and and right. we offered the one you were asking for a comparison of. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to what we offered last time, and nobody signed up for it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, we could still make right. You could still recommend mm -hmm. three offerings. Uh, but but the reality seems to be, if you give me something a little bit cleaner and it's cheaper than having Eversource go out and buy, and there's many reasons why Eversource is at a disadvantage for buying electricity for you, the yeah. rules that are imposed upon it uh, yeah. don't allow it to time its purchases to your office. Yeah. Uh, but it, it guarantees that well, you'll have some electricity, right? Um, that people want that, if they can be a little cleaner than that, a little cheaper, that's that's enough. Yes. Yeah. And, and other people are really looking to have as carbon-free emissions as possible uh, to make that contribution and, and feel they can afford to do so. And so they don't really want to go halfway. Um, we, we had chosen three before because 
two of the three proved to be cheaper than what um, what Eversource was yeah Eversource was able to buy on behalf of people, um, but you know it seems like maybe it would be simpler just to have those two. Anyway, that's our recommendation. It's not your decision. Well, it is your decision. <laughs> you can decide differently, right? Okay. Uh, right. Is there any yeah. other questions about this? I'm trying to be clear, but I don't think mm -hmm. I'm as cogent as I think you're very clear. No, I, I'm curious why the prices are going up to the degree that they are. I mean, I know there's yeah. well, everything's more well, expensive, but in the nitty gritty of it, yeah, the energy prices have been affected by the change in weather and mm -hmm. by the other demands for electricity. Uh, the war in Ukraine has definitely had an influence mm -hmm. as the um, shortages of uh, uh, natural gas, right, which has been, uh, so it's been uh, constrained delivery, I guess, in part. And so and, and we have a higher proportion that are on natural gas. So the prices have been ahistorically high, right? And particularly so this last year as a result of, but even before the war in Ukraine, they were higher than otherwise would have been anticipated because of climate changes that we can expect to uh, continue. And so um, at this point where the uh, where the backups or the you know, sources are, are nuclear and uh, natural gas. And this is just my opinion at this point, right? Um, the nuclear, with the, you, there's no expansion that you see. Mm -hmm. uh, the natural gas uh, is, a lot of it is going off as LNG to supply Europe, right? And, um, and now during the war. And uh, the those and, and the other new sources of electricity that'll be local, like wind and like, are still a couple of years at most, earliest three from uh, turning on. Uh, there's uh, you can anticipate continue to have high electricity prices. Um, they might get mitigated by the um, you know right. By if, if you have consistently warm winters, but when we don't have consistently warm winters, we have fluctuating winters with periods of extreme demand. So um, last year, uh, if our contract had ended last year, it would have been really bad. Uh, the town of Wendell had its own aggregation, municipal aggregation, and they started out at eight and a half cents instead of nine. And then last year they had to go for 22. Now they're joining us. They think 14 sounds really good. <laughs> now, 22 was actually cheaper than if you'd stayed with Eversource. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the, it's indicative of what can happen in a year, right? And, and so we can't forecast it, but when you look at the fact that prices um, are cheaper for two years out rather than one, it suggests that you should, and given current conditions, for difficult change within a year. Uh, it suggests that that's the argument for the two-year one. The argument for the three-year is uh, primarily that you are assured of this price, that that price will not change for three years. And so if something else happens to treat a further increase in, in energy prices, we're still locked in and protected for that period. Uh, the downside is the step increase Right, will be larger <laughs> if if prices rise over those three years. Right, the next price we get will be higher still, and so we had a step to nine, and we sat there for three years, and now we have a step yeah. to fourteen. Although the step to nine was a step down. Yes, that that's true. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tiny, tiny, tiny step down. Yeah. Right, and then we just didn't. Yeah, is given war in Ukraine mm -hmm. the fact that wind is not online but right. could be. is there any reason why this is not the time to enter into a three year contract um it would large well that the, you know, that the are, argument are, would are be, we in the middle of a spike or are we with uh, wind looking at a reduction there's two reasons you might want Brian to choose a two year rather than a three that I can think of and one is 
not all of the suppliers are willing to offer three year contracts. Uh, like supplier one is not, supplier two is. It might be that there's substantially better pricing for two years than three among a supplier that didn't submit sample price. Uh, the other would be that some suppliers are not willing to do it because they think anything could happen in two years, right? And that maybe you'd be missing out on cheaper. Well, then that's what that would be. Right, like, right. I, you know, you know are, are we missing out on fee for well, by locking I, in? I, I, we don't know, obviously. My own recommendation is, and we don't have a red, we're just saying as a committee in two to three. My own is that what's the downside of choosing three? If prices suddenly rock mm -hmm. like a rock, we can and and Eversource is able to take advantage of that. You could switch to Eversource, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the loss of the greenhouse gas benefit, but um, the it seems like. The risk of higher prices to me seems much risk, much okay. worse than yeah. if we end up being 14 cents versus 13.9 in the third year, or something, yeah. right? But um, to me, overall, over time, I don't expect energy prices to do anything except go up. It's just that there's fluctuations okay. along the way, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it could be that they just flatline. Yeah, no, the, my, my only point was that right. Right. there are some conventions that are right that are right now, especially right. the war, that would right. might lead one to think that the prices are higher now, right. you know, the prices will go down. Yeah, if you were worried that you might be missing out at the end of the two years, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be able to renegotiate your contract for another year. Mm -hmm. And um, Wendell can renegotiate now because they maybe only did a one year contract. Well, Wemco, no. What, you said Wendell. Wendell. Yeah. Wendell only did a one year contract. Yeah. So that's why they're because the there's expired last year and pricing was so bad. Yeah. Um, and so they said, we're sure that it's got to be less than this. Yeah. Next time around. Right. Are we at the end of a two year or a three year contract? Oh, so we had a three month contract that three took months? us to January oh, okay. um, three, years. three years ago. And now we're on a three year contract that went from January 1st of that year through December 31st of this month. Got it. Okay. Right. So we, we actually, and we did that because there wasn't much of a difference. At the time, and we anticipated that prices would be dropping, which they were. Um, so, the recommendation from Colonial is that um, you would be best served by doing a two to three year one. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that says, I definitely want three. You can either say, I definitely want three, and just lock it in and have that assurance that people will know what they're going to pay. Right, because you don't know every six months what you're going to pay if otherwise. Right? Um, or you could say, let's do two so that we have the opportunity to renegotiate. Or you could say, choose two or three based on what the best pricing is. Right. Um, do all the towns that we're um, aggregating with have to pick the same time? That is the challenge. I, I could we see have, going we have to way. pick the same supplier. Okay. And then we have to pick the same duration contract because to them, we're all one load, right? Right. The reason we can get better, we can get better pricing because we're a larger community of acting as 15, yeah. right? Um, than just acting on our own. And you have a balance of demands. By looking at it, you have you have a good mix of industrial and rural and urban and right you have a better diversity of um, demands and so for the supplier it looks like a less risky uh, investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in fact, there are very few. Uh, almost every major city has switched to, and you know, and Springfield is bidding for aggregators now. Mm -hmm. um, so. 
the the trend is less and less to ask your utility to go out and buy the electricity for you um, and more ask the municipal authority to do that so is this something we're taking some kind of action on this evening yeah we have to um we sort of well i would say we have to vote this way we could vote to uh put this in brian's hands but uh, assign him the responsibility to sign us up on the day of the meeting but brian would want our guidance mm -hmm. uh, whether we and and if that could take the form of taking the energy committee's um, uh, recommendation of uh, pointing out to the one that's on the bottom of page one as to quote the cheap option and the one at the bottom of page two as the greenest option and and like looking at two years if it were two years you might go with supplier one instead of supplier two because for equivalent mm. lines across it's a little cheaper there but if you go with three years mm. it's a little cheaper on supplier two for those two plans um so and, and let me say that that could all change so yeah, if, if you wanted to give Brian the most flexibility to be able to ensure that all towns could agree on something, you would mm -hmm. give him the license to go anywhere from two to three years, you know, and, based on what yeah. the, the group of 15 mm -hmm. thinks at that time after a couple hour discussion. Um, we. The all 15 have to agree on the duration, they have to agree on the supplier, they don't have to agree on the products that are offered. Right. So you have to specify what products you want us to, to offer, right? right. And, I, and I'm strongly recommending the two that I was talking right. about. Right, and, and if um, there's more suppliers, right. then it's hard for us to know if one of these others would be more That's attractive, right. like if, like if there were, I think the one we have now with mm -hmm. with um, the lower price one is like Texas Wind, which sort of it's greener and way cheaper, and but all of that money is going kind of outside of the region into right. renewables. Right. Um, that that would not if we just told them, oh, just look at. Uh, something like the one on the bottom of the first page and the one on the bottom of the second page, that would not be available. That's right. So I, yeah. I would say for the company that's willing to offer both three year and two year contracts, the three years seems is cheaper yeah. in every case. Right, right. Um, and the, there, for this particular supplier one, there are some additional restrictions on um, we that make it a little more cumbersome but you know so that if you had an apples to apples thing you might want to choose supplier two if it was the same price or something mm -hmm. like that uh, yeah. but um, given in the preliminary discussion most of the towns that had an opinion were thinking three years Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason, not inclined to necessarily choose supplier one if this had been what the choice was. Others were comfortable with either two or mm -hmm. three. There wasn't a town that said two years or well, we're out there. Hill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if that I'm helps, giving Brian yeah. the option of two or yeah. three, and as the energy energy committee recommended a slightly cheaper, but as green as possible, and then wicked green um, yeah. option to go for. And the options we get are likely to be like the same names that we're seeing on this sheet here, basically. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, the idea is that if you can get indicative pricing, it won't change, it can't change a lot in right. two weeks. Right, no, but I, I like the, the titles here of-, of uh, Yes, right, these are, these are the, these categories, these eight yeah. products of which I'm recommending two, yeah. are the ones that will be asked for in the actual pricing as well. Right. Okay. And so the, any suppliers that want to bid will be bidding 
on these eight options. Okay. And then each town needs to choose two or three from there um, to offer. So you can come back to that decision, right? Right. The thing that has to happen on the 24th, if all the towns agree, mm -hmm. is to choose a supplier in a duration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But I'm thinking if it's on the basis of the pricing, it's important to think about which pro products we're looking for pricing yeah. on. Yeah. So it's complicated, right? But um, this last time around, we yeah, probably yeah, saved hundreds of thousands of dollars for people in Franklin County over the last three years. Um, and I think it's worthwhile doing. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, to me, the, the main thing is I, I want to be as, um, well, as specific as possible, but also right. give Brian the flexibility. Right. So I feel like if I say only this product and this product should we consider, um, if there's like a third or a fourth supplier that does bid and there's something, uh, you know, in like, like the 100% Texas wind that was really cheap this last time around. Like I would not want to tie his hands to say he can't choose that as a low price green option. So we can That's certainly what? come back to that, right? That, yeah. that isn't something he's signing that day, right? Oh, it isn't something he's signing. That no, day. but the point is, like, if if what price are you going to look at? Are you going to look at the price of all eight of these, or are you going to look at the ones that you think you're going to offer? And and so I'm saying that in making the decision, say, of two years versus three, or a particular supplier, you would want to look for the one that was going to be cheapest, the best duration for the two categories that right. we think we want. Right. Right. But yes, right, right. but if, say, something was in that second category and a third supplier came in yes. with a 12 cents, if in a front of three year contract. If that's the supplier we choose. You can't yeah. pick and right. choose. Oh, no, yeah. Right. yeah. But I'm just imagining if a supplier came through right. with a low price like that on uh, one of these other products, it might be that many times we go for that. It, it I don't know. might be. Um, so we've got uh, to give a lease. Yeah. Waitley's experience is fairly indicative right. that um, there's people who want to save some money. And and would like help being cleaner while doing so. Yeah. And and, and people who want to be as clean as possible. And it's pretty constant no. across. No, the I understand. I understand that. I'm, I'm not worried about the the greenest of all greens. Right. I'm worried about the cheaper ones. Right. If but, somebody, if another supplier comes in with something cheaper, it doesn't happen to be in one of these two categories. Do we want to be able to consider it? You will be able to, right? But only if that's the supplier you choose. So you can't right. choose a different supplier for the greenest yeah. of the green. Right. And the I, I, I understand that. I'm not suggesting that no. at all. No, I'm what, suggesting what, if I yeah. if I tell Brian he can only look at these two categories and he can't look at the other ones, then I don't want to tie his hands that way. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That. And when you're talking about suppliers, you're talking about column one and column oh, two. That's right. That's but so there could be column two all the way. That's right. Everybody or in the group has to. That's right. You can yeah. you okay. can you can ask. You can choose what food items a caterer will provide to your event, but you can't choose two different caterers. You have to choose a caterer, and then from and they've all agreed to provide. These offerings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, except supplier one will provide chicken a la king if you want it three years right. from now. Yeah, and no dessert. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Right. <laughs> right, right. So, okay. Right. So, what do we say to Brian? How would you put this in words? Well, I think I'm good with the cutting it down to two. Make the simple, make the choice simple based on our previous experience. Two, 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 uh, two categories. They call it two products. Two, two products. products. Two products. Two, two yeah. products. Yeah. I'm also yeah. comfortable with the two years, fish or chicken. Two years. Two oh, years we need a vegan years. option, please. Yeah. Just kidding. 
Um, uh, and, and then the two years or three years, I guess I, I feel like we might be in the camp of and two and, years, three yeah. years, either one. It's not like negotiation is that big a deal. I think it's more important that we get the deal than it be two years or three years. Yeah. Right. And I like the option that in at least one of them that most or if not mm -hmm. all of the energy is generated in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And so we're putting money back into our own. Economy. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It seems like a so, good yeah. self nurturing right. thing to do. And yeah. so to be clear, if the actual pricing follows the same trend as this. Um, mm. Sample pricing, right? Then that the was cheaper. Will be the three-year contract. Yeah, yeah. And we picked it. We picked it default last time. The yes, program. right. So uh, the cheaper almost the always default. the cheaper of the two options default. Okay. And yeah. so that's the one you get, unless you opt out of the program entirely because you really want EverSource to buy your electricity, um, or because you opt out. Because because you want to have the greenest option, right? And in that case, that's something like where you check a box on a card or you go to the website and you say, I want this instead. If you do nothing, you get the, the cheap cheapest of whatever you get the default option we choose. And we always the right. one we make the default the cheapest of the ones we're offering. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because that that's what most of the residents are yeah. looking for, right? uh, and so it it makes us the easiest to continue on. Okay. All right. So anyway, that think was about a, how to put that into motion. Um, Wait for Julie to get back. Yeah. Yeah. That was. I hope an hour well spent, but was <laughs> <laughs> less than an hour. Yeah. So if if folks are enrolled in the program currently. Will they automatically be changed to the default? Yes, that's right. So if they want to change to anything other than the default, they would have to go on the website. They, they will get a notification. Okay, right. This, this is what's going on. Um, made, right. We got our electricity from Dynamo, and now it's going to come from Gizmo or something, right? Yeah. Um, and the price was this, and it's going to be that. Yep. And if if you would like, there's a greener option if you want, and here's what to do if you want that. And if you want to opt out and instead get electricity from Eversource or anybody else who spams your mailbox, you know, um, uh, you you can do so by do, taking this step, right. which again is usually like send a card back or go to a website. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah, the, but if you do nothing, okay. yeah. otherwise you have to do nothing with one caveat. If there's someone who doesn't already own electricity or adds electricity and they haven't had it before, right? Um, or goes off of a third party contract, then um, they get swept into the same program, default program as everybody else, unless they opt out. Okay. So, and anybody who's locked into a third party contract that doesn't end will still be in that until it ends, right? Yeah. All right. We're trying to come up with a motion. Um, well, give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Uh, I move we authorize the administrator to negotiate the price for us with no particular preference between a two and three year contract. And looking particularly in mind at the prices on the two products that were recommended by the Energy Committee. Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Is that a couple of cash? Can I just clear? Yeah. Make yep. sure. So we're, we're talking mass class one recs. Yep. That's a mass requirement plus 5%. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about the 100% mass class one Rex. Yes. Yeah. Those, those, those are the two products. Okay. okay. Um, do you think that you need any further um, any further advising or, or feedback from us? Um, I don't think so. I think okay. you, you'll be on the call for the yeah. so and, I can and, and, and Brian always has the option to say no. Yeah. Yeah. 
and have all the towns go through and together. I, I think in general, the, the, the preferred option is three years, but if there's some towns that are holding out on two, right, we don't want to stand in the way of that. Understood. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for your guidance on okay. this. Are we ready to promote? Yep. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Great. So, thank you very much. It's a complicated thing, and thank you for explaining it so well, so nicely. Thank you for your time, and for everybody back here. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is COVID nineteen rapid tests are available at the town offices, library, and police station. That's all we have under COVID nineteen. Um, <laughs> we have. Um, uh, old business. There's um let me see. I've got uh, I see Jim Ross and I see our uh, soon to be new fire chief here. And I'm wondering, and I see also Donna is here. So I'm just trying to look forward to like if there's an item that I you're here. JP specifically is here for the personnel committee. For the personnel committee. Where is that? It's under new business. That's under six D. Oh, six D, okay. Yeah. And Ice and Don is here for historical commission. For historical commission, where and that's the one. So Don is here. Jim, Jim Ross, you just come in here because it's a fun place to be, right? Just hang out. Right? Or are you here for for Her Hurley or something? Is there a library thing on here? That's what you're usually here for. It's the library or the veteran yes. desk. It's for capital employees. For the capital. Uh, yeah. it's that, also 60. Yeah. It's oh, okay, that's not okay. All right, um, well, um, why don't we go to um, 6D, take the that old business out of order so the uh, those folks, and then maybe do new business. But I would encourage everyone to stick around because. If I can make one comment, just a public comment. Oh, and I want to congratulate Sergeant Bates on his oh. new job as police and combat. Yes, congratulations. Well, very well deserved. Yeah. Yeah. It was there. Is there a date on that? Uh, July one. I'll give you a formal. Oh, okay. Right. You were part time. I was just going to say, a part time officer. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay, all right, let's go to 6D then, um, which is uh, to discuss the fiscal year 24 recommendations of the personnel committee and capital improvement planning committee. Okay, so this means I have to dig, here we go. I think I have to dig that part down. All right. All right. Um, So this is a, a lot of stuff that I think I've seen already from the personnel committee. Right. So this um, this is nothing. This is nothing that's um, that's new. Yeah. Um, I think just, you know, we've heard about much of this before. Wanted to give the select board a chance to discuss amongst the board about any of these items that um, will be discussed at the joint meeting with the yeah. finance committee on uh, Thursday night. So yeah, they hadn't been, we hadn't discussed them. Yes, before. we had, right. Well, some of them I thought we had discussed and voted on, like the fire chief uh, salary and- um, I think we only voted on the, the appointment, not the salary. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that that could be true. That could be true. I feel like we vote on every the treasure collector. I treasure collector. Be, we voted on that. And I think we voted on yeah. the assistant treasure collector. Did we vote on that? Um, it's on page three of the memo that says. Dated March 15th. Yeah, the question, my question is, did we vote on that this last meeting? Um, 
we voted on the, the training aspect. I think the training aspect, the, the training and, aspect, of those and, and the making the pay increase retroactive. Right. Right. So in terms of sort of the the increase in any of those in any of these salaries that are listed on page three of that memo, I don't think we voted on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I was just talking about the assistant treasurer collector in particular. Yeah. A lot of information, Jim. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, for for example, let me say recommendations on personnel committee. They're not talking about well, the personnel committee recommended for colas. Um, that's another about, that's, aspect. Of yeah. That's yeah. another I aspect. Like to have it. I didn't see a sheet on that, but that's. <laughs> That's I, I thought that was that's the one where I think there we have to some of their documentation is in here. Is that in a different it's in the March 15th? Oh, that's after the fire chief. Right. There we go. Yeah. And well, there's more capital to look at. Fire chief. I think I was I was distracted by that one. Okay. And then there's some more on uh, that one. Okay. Woo, there's some more. Um Jim, there's um Brian, is it appropriate to bring up an email that you had sent about town finance in general? in the discussion of COLA, um, because I'd really like to be um, as generous as possible with the employees of the town and really uh, compensate people for the work that they do. And my question is also, is that sustainable in the long run? And if we don't know that it is, how do we make it sustainable? Yeah, so um, in, in the email that I had sent, it was looking at one aspect of municipal finance, and that's this proposition two and a half. Mm -hmm. um, there's something called excess levy capacity. Um, and that is the amount that the town could raise uh, between um, the prior year's tax levy and the current, you know, the, the, the fiscal year that you're planning for. There's a certain amount that you can raise the tax levy without having to go to a proposition two and a half override. Mm -hmm. um, each year, Prop two and a half allows you to increase your tax levy two and a half percent from the prior year limit, plus what's called certified new growth. So certified new growth is is pretty much new construction, whether mm -hmm. it's a new house, whether it's a new building, whether it's an addition. Um, it's it's based on that, and there's a certain value. I mean, unfortunately, we don't know what. Um, our certified new growth will be until well past the annual town meeting in October, and November. Um, but one thing that's that's clear over the past five or six years is that our certified new growth has been decreasing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was at a high of $120,000 and last year it was around $45,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of a little spurt there. With the, yeah, but, but yeah. we know that sort of thinking, thinking about what's going on in the town and, and what's happened over that time period with with a lot of new development of Pine Plains Estates um, and on Dickinson Hill Road, but a lot of those houses have been built and those lots are full. So our new growth is going down, right? Our certified new growth is going down. We're not having as much mm -hmm. new growth. So that that so that so uh, doesn't increase your, your excess levy capacity goes up less, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's two and a half of the prior year and then it's Couple of years back it was 120, and now it's you know getting a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. and our expenses are are going up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what happens is that um, we're we're adding our our tax base isn't growing as quickly, and our expenses are increasing. Mm -hmm. So um, the, there's no there's no new taxpayers to share the burden essentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, so. What what could happen eventually if this trend continues is that our excess levy capacity is going to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink mm -hmm. to eventually to a point where a town could need a two and a half override. Um, now there's also something called 
um, a levy ceiling, and this is very complicated. And um, your levy ceiling is is a, a, a tax levy amount that you cannot exceed. Mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. sort of a hard cap, right? Even with an override, even with an override, you can't go over that. Um, in some hard hit, um, you know, urban areas um, during the Great Recession, they actually saw their property values, their total assessed values, decline significantly. Mm -hmm. So their expenses were going up, and actually, the levy ceiling, their levy ceiling was coming down while their expenses were going up, and they hit it. And you cannot exceed it by, as a matter of law, you cannot exceed it. So mm -hmm. at that point, you cut services, you cut spending. Um, the town's the town's override capacity, the wait was nowhere near that. Um, the override capacity is, I want to say, it's close to four million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, so the town's not in danger of, of, of you know, hitting its ceiling anytime soon, absent catastrophic something catastrophic happening. Um, but the trend. The trend for our excess levy capacity over the past two years is negative. It's shrinking. Now it's still over. Now even with the current projections, it's still over a million dollars. Um, but if we eat, you know, if we eat away hundred thousand each year, then within with ten years, then we're, you know, we're up against our our uh, levy limit. So um, we just sort of need to be mindful of, of what's happening. I think in the bigger the bigger picture, which is you know, um, certified new growth seems to be shrinking, and that's the trend. Um, obviously, we want we're trying to take step, take uh, steps to reverse that. You know, we're trying to we're doing the economic development study on exit thirty five. Um, you know, any type of non property tax revenue that we can generate um, helps that also. Um, so so. You know whether it's meals tax or whether it's a cannabis excise tax that may eventually come through. Those are non-property tax sources of revenue. Um, it, it helps that, right? It it, it 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 helps reduce the tax levy because it's money that we generate outside of the property tax levy. So, of course, there's upscale housing coming to Waitley too. <laughs> so that would be certified new growth. That would be certified new growth. It's just you never know. You don't know. Right, it's been five, you know, how many years? going to plan in five years. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Right. Um, so it's, it's right. It's how do you, how do we set the conditions for appropriate growth in town? Right. That's that's a struggle that all municipalities face. Yeah. Um, and the answer I think is different for each municipality. But I, I just wanted to provide that that backdrop. Mm -hmm. it, it's not. It's not. Oh my goodness, the sky's falling. We're gonna have a prop to an app override next year. But it's yeah. it's worth keeping an eye on the trends because yeah. Um, let's be thoughtful. Yeah, about it. yeah. You always get to the bad point and you go back and say, Oh, we should have you know, we should have seen something like that. So yeah. Um yeah. I don't have a crystal ball, um, but the the trend for excess living capacity is it will be reduced prior fiscal year and this fiscal year if everything was stayed the same. Thank you. Um, yeah. Mm. Um, and there's also there's also some some other things that have happened. Like we lost the rental income for the for, for the um for the, the town offices here. And um you know, so that that, that takes from ten to fifteen thousand dollars off of non property tax revenue and unless there's revenue that that, that replaces that non property tax revenue replaces that that's something that's assumed through yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. the tax levy. So um, there's a lot of moving parts, and a lot of moving parts we don't have the benefit of knowing in the infinite wisdom of the state. So, and, and there are a lot of moving parts we've got no control over whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's always. Yeah. yeah. I guess what's different to me this year is that <clears throat> last year, I think our employees. Definitely got a much smaller cola than many, many other places gave. And like, okay, Social Security was what, 8.7% last year? Yeah. And we did like, what, three? You know? Uh, and I think if we do something, at least close, I think that the first health committee was recommending. Um, 7.1. Yeah. 
which is kind of the average between uh, Social Security and what the uh, uh, consumer price index was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and even, even if you look into you know the month after we had talked about it, we're still talking the average of six per ten. Uh, and I just feel like because things went the way they did last year, but that's where fighting for. I'm not saying 6% a year for every year into perpetuity or even, or seven, I'm, I'm not necessarily quoting the right number, um, but I, I still am just flabbergasted at the conversation with the finance committee where they just, in you know, it, it, we want to get more if we're going to pay more. Well, you don't get more when you just, and you just pay more when there's inflation. And it was as if they didn't understand this concept of inflation. And then in the next breath, they talked about how the water department should raise their rates, meaning you pay more, but you don't get more water. You know, it, it just, it, it, I then flabbergasted that the concept of inflation uh, is, is not and, something. And they don't, at least from the last meeting, get the concept of inflation such that house assessments go up also when the taxes move. So if there was money <laughs> that will pay for uh, yeah. those increases. That, you're right, right. It's, it's not so, a one-way street of it's not, costs go up and revenues don't. Right. So I, I feel like as um, of the things, I think we voted pretty much everything that the, the personnel committee brought up in terms of positions and um, and pay rates, if that was appropriate to vote on. I remember going through all of these, but the one thing we haven't really talked that about is the, is the COLA. And I guess I'm on the personnel committee, so this just so everybody knows. And I guess I just feel strongly about it that we should take the personnel committee's recommendation seriously and do the best we can to get as close as we can to their recommendation. I, I see the recommendation. I think it's based on the social security increase, but when I look at the New England you know, general mm -hmm. CPI and 5.5, I think that a number, it, it, a number it, more like 6% would work for the town rather than the full 7.1. Yeah, I, 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 I would love to right. give the employees 7%. Right. But and I, I think we didn't have the 5.5% 5. 5 okay. number at the, the last okay. person. And, you know, I would err slightly on the higher side of the 5.5 5 because last year right. we did not. Yeah. yeah, and I think that... So the, the number that I've been thinking about is proposed 6 and before we go further with that, can I ask for clarification on the page that says financial assessment of proposed changes? And it has a list of positions. Uh, and what's the cover? Look like that uh, one? The cover looks like what is it? The 50? Yeah. Okay. Page three. My phone was over the page, so I didn't there see it. There we go. There we and go. There's page three, and then there is one of the spreadsheet pages that is landscape three yep. pages later than that. Uh -huh. And that says polar projections. What is the relationship between page three and polar projections fiscal year 2024? Well, these are salary adjustments, which we, on page three. Yeah. Okay. These are adjustments to uh, the employee's salary, independent of what the POLA would be. That... Um, uh, getting an operator laborer was, I mean, and this isn't like per hour. This is like total for the it's year, aggregate, total yeah. aggregated for the year. So I don't know how many hours that corresponds to, but it's to raise that wage to something where we could actually get someone to take a job. Um, say for, uh, say for really um, uh, all of these, they were, this is a cumulative number for the yearly budget. Of how much just the increase in hourly pay we recommend. But this is not COLA. 
This is not cola. Ah, this is to that's the to, relationship. <laughs> right. That's the relationship. Yeah. Is, is that there? It's not cola. This is cola just is looking at people's okay. salaries, comparing to um, what we think of as similar towns, knowing that there's uniquenesses about the positions people have in a lot of small towns, and then. So if we're looking at the next the yeah. two pages well, later, can, going yeah. to six percent. So yeah, the so cost of the town of fifty-two. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's that strictly the cola. That's strictly increase in Yes, got it. And okay. that's it. Yeah, I was like seven thousand. So, that's not bad. Why aren't we doing it? And then I went, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Okay. I could be agreeable to six percent. Um, like I said, I I would like to be as generous as possible, and I also just want to state on the public record that. There was discussion previously in other meetings, and I believe they were joint finance and select board meetings, that sounded as if we were putting different value on different positions within the town and some people's positions being more important or sounding as if the speaker was saying that they were more important. Mm -hmm. And I just want to state on the public record that I think we have a fantastic yeah. town and a lot of really good personnel. And I view it as a team, not that any one position is more important because you take one person out of that and you're going to have trouble. We're, we're, we kind of mm -hmm. run on the bare yeah. minimum. I don't yeah. think we have people yeah. who are superfluous. I so, yes, we agree. say that out loud. Right. Good. Meeting. Good. Yeah. Because I I feel like I tried to say that not as eloquently at the <laughs> yeah. actual meeting, <laughs> um, and and I think they were they were out of line when they said. I know the speaker report. said that he felt that he had been misinterpreted, but for the um, for the personnel who were. I mean, so uh, several is interpreted it. Uh, I think. I, 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 yeah. I just wanted to say it out loud that you know. Yeah. No, I, 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 I don't think you should have said that people are hysterical because Anna got a higher paying job. Nobody's hysterical. About Nobody that. was hysterical. We no, were concerned and we were sorry. But historically, hysterical is something that men call women when, he, when they want them to shut up. Yeah. Right? So Agreed. I think that the context of the way that word is used was also pretty bad. That's so my opinion. We, though. It's not. Are it's, we voting on something here? Or are we discussing? And then there's our chance to discuss with. in the absence of the finance committee. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Share our ideas. Brian, how else did towns make money? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can't sell people. We can't have bake sales. We, yeah. Well, we can have bake sales, but we can have bake sales. Taxes. But, it's income yeah. from businesses. It's but we don't get income we tax sell, from businesses. Say, it's very, it's, yeah. it's very restrictive. And we're, yeah, they, we don't get tax. The state hand costs. No, we don't we get don't tax. income tax from businesses. No, did I say right. that? I uh, okay, yeah. yeah. No, we the, the state the state does limit what we can do. What there's basically property tax, right? Either real estate or other property taxes. Um, so is it really lucrative once the state takes those? Yeah, yeah, personal property tax. Yeah, we yeah. get the we get the we get the little dribbles. Yeah, yeah. We should be right. levying the state for more mm. more money per acre for our state-owned land and that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, and that is. I was actually quite impressed at the municipal meeting. Yes, yeah. too. Our the those two reps are uh, our former state senator. Now we're in a different district. And and Natalie, but they just laid out. Well, there was a little math problem because the slides at the table said our top ten priorities, and then they put twelve priorities up. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's a small a small math thing. But every, like one after the other after the other were things like here's all the things we tried. Here's where we were successful. Here's where we're partially successful. Here's where we're going back, and this is how we're building consensus to get this stuff moving forward. And so I am hopeful there, but the state has not been our savior in the past. Yeah, and we can't, can't wait for that. Can't wait for it. And I did hear an excellent presentation form of question from the select person from the town of Washington. Oh, oh. Was it Jim Lovejoy? Yeah. Yeah. 
what, what did you say? Who, who, well, oh, he, he was the one who had all the facts and figures. Um, oh, the, yeah, the one with the spreadsheet. Oh, the spreadsheet. no, Kent. Was it, I thought it was town of Washington. It was, it was in that like ninety percent of the Washington. Yeah, <laughs> no, yes. and then he, he, he was the one who, oh, who knew, you know, what the property of Martha's Vineyard and the tape. And oh, yeah, the like the two acres in. He wasn't the, the, the table. No, he was. No, 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 he was standing up. That's Kent. Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe it's maybe he's in Kent now. Okay. No, but no, he, his name. Was his Kent. name. His name is Kent. Oh, sorry. Kent. Okay. His name. I took note because I was like, dang. Yeah. yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he, he's he's studying. <laughs> yes, yes. If it's Mount Washington, the state. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't think it was Mount Mount Washington was sitting with us. There was Wa Mount Washington with us, and he was from he was, Washington. Was his from name was Kent. Right from town of Washington. Oh. But not okay. Yeah, I think this is probably not very coherent for the people. Right, right, right. Insider baseball. Yeah, yeah. insider yeah. baseball. Exactly. All right. All right. Um, so do we want to talk anything more about the uh, personal committee recommendations? Does anybody out there want to yeah, I mean, say anything? Yes, yes that's please. Why, why I came in. I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I didn't, I knew you were um, here for something, <laughs> and I didn't write down your name. Yeah, I put a little mark there. So I've got a, I've got a few, a uh, couple handouts for you. I think okay. this is probably stuff that you've seen before. Um, oh, is this? Yeah, yeah, I think we have the goals. Yeah. yeah, and I got, yeah, I got a copy of that, but I don't know if I have the. Um, so, and then the back, there's just a, um, a little spread here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want the front answer to follow along. So, I know that there's, there's a lot to kind of take in with what I'm proposing yeah. and what I'm requesting here. And my goal is to kind of help you understand it better um, from my perspective and also um, let me help you break it down into kind of bite-sized pieces so that we can digest the individual components of things here. Um, starting off, the, the most obvious thing is the, um, the salary or the hourly rate and how did I come up with that number and what does it mean? Um, the spreadsheet in front of you here is basically um, comparing Franklin County towns of, popu of uh, similar populations to uh, Waitley. Um, so we can have some kind of comparison as to what they're spending for the fire chief salary or the fire chief rate. Um, all these numbers are based off of the FERCOG study. Um, that was done. I've got yeah. that here if anybody wants to take a quick look at it too. It's kind of a lot of stuff to take in all at once. Um, when I averaged the six similar towns of a population um, and left Waitley out of the average for the hourly rate, the hourly rate was $33 an hour. Um, some of these towns have 40 hour per week positions. Some of them have um, 19 or 20 hour a week positions. Um, mm -hmm. I use the number 20 for Waitley because that's what's in the job description. And that's where I came up with that number. Um, the number that I proposed for the hourly rate for the fire chief position is $30 an hour, which is $3 less than the average that I came up with, which I think is uh, very reasonable. Uh, what are you getting from me for $30 an hour? Well, you're gonna get somebody with, um, it's going to be going on uh, almost 35 years of experience um, in the fire service, another, another two years. Um, I've been a, in emergency medical services since 1989. I've run the town's ambulance before. Um, I'm an officer in a career fire department. Um, I've got numerous certifications. I'm a credentialed fire chief with the state department of fire services. Um, so there's you are getting some some value for the for the dollar. Oh, yeah. um, and then the next question would be, how many hours do we think it's going to take to do the job properly? And to kind of help understand that, I put together this other list that you have in front of you that outlines some of the short-term goals I have for the incoming fire chief for fiscal year twenty four. 
Um, it's not a comprehensive list. And this is just some of the big things that jump out and will take up the majority of the time from what I from what I see so far. The stuff in red is things I, things that I see that have to get done. Either they have to get done because um, they're paramount for departmental safety or public safety, or they have to get done because they're actually law that they have to get done. Um, and I can run through those real real quick here. What's a SOC? Yeah. Um, What's a SOC? Standard Operating Guideline. Guideline. Right. Um, then it's a guideline just gives us some ability to waiver from it as opposed to a procedure. That, and industry-wide, people tend to go more with guidelines as opposed to uh, yeah. procedures so that yeah. if we're in a complicated situation, we can kind of right. adapt it. It's kind of like the pirate code, right? <laughs> <laughs> You've got it. You've got it. Um, so training, I'm going to start off with training. And, and I want you to think about um, where the department needs to be in the future and where it is today. Um, I don't want to look so much at like where we've been in the past, but I guess I can preface it by saying that the current fire chief took over almost 20 years ago. Um, and when Chief Hannum took over, um, things were changing in the fire service. You know, there was a lot more expectations on, on the role, a lot more responsibilities. Um, and the amount of change that he saw over the previous administrations or over what the fire service was like when his father was here, um, we can see once again in the last 20 years, like things are moving forward exponentially. The responsibilities of the position um, are, are growing and it takes more time to comply with all of these um, all of these uh, things that really need to get done. And the most important things that need to get done are the things that revolve around life safety, life safety for the firefighters and life safety for the public. Um, when we talk about fire, I always like to remind people when I do public education that you know, fire doesn't discriminate. It doesn't care how rich you are, how poor you are, how many people live in your town, um, how many people are on your fire department. It's it's going to behave the same way and it has the same life hazards. You know, So we've got high risk um, occupancies here. We've got a couple of manufacturing facilities that are very large. We've yeah. got explosive stored in town. We have got an LNG facility. We've got a high speed rail interstate highway. Mm -hmm. to state highways yep. for a small town there's a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. um and as such we really we have to train to a higher level than what we're doing right now mm -hmm. and one of the things that i want to implement is monthly training and the monthly training when we think about how much time it's going to take it's going to take the amount of time that i'm going to be there when people are training but you also have to recognize that it takes time to prepare Mm -hmm. I, for 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 good training, I you know, teach for a living. The curriculum as a teacher, you know, like you can spend two or three times the amount, the amount of time oh, in the I, lesson you, plan that you would te do for teaching. Yeah, you, yeah. So <laughs> I I spend at least that much time. To so, so training. Uh, I, I just want you to remember that when you look at this, that it's it's right. not just it's not the just three hours a month. Start making things up on the spot. Right? Yeah, and we want to be able to reproduce things and have um, a standard that we're raising the department to and raising all of our members to. Um, and this includes, you know, individual qualifications for different levels um, in the department, it includes training with our mutual aid agencies, you know, the other surrounding towns. We haven't been doing a lot of training with them, and we really should. We've been spending a lot of time in Hatfield this past year for structure fires. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go to Conway a lot. Sometimes we have fire more fires here. But we really need to be really adept at working with our mutual aid partners. Um, I want to utilize the Mass Fire Academy building in Springfield. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that our town has ever really utilized that resource. Um, it's, it's a good resource. It's become available to us in the last um, five or six years. It's been some change to the state level. Um, the state took over Springfield's training facility there. So it gives us something a little bit closer than snow yeah. to get to. Um, and then another thing is um, assigning some monthly responsibilities to certain department members to try and bring people into the fold and get them more active and get them more proficient at what's going on in the department. Our SOGs um, are woefully outdated at this point. And I, I know we're going through some of this at, at the town level too, trying to I, I wonder, yeah. rewrite some of those things. Um, these are really specific to the fire service. I don't think there's much that, because I did sit through the presentation the other day. I don't know that that's something that she's necessarily able to sure. help us yeah. with. But there are other resources yeah. that I can I can lean on to try and 
Right. Get our, I was going to say that we keep our eyes open for a grant. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some professional services that we can we can look into also to help us with that. Um, pre planning, I just basically touched on that stuff, but we really need to pre plan and have mm -hmm. um, SOGs and plans in place, not only for us, but for our mutual aid partners when we have an incident at one of our high risk hazard uh, facilities here. Um, I listed some of the associations that we um, monthly. Two of them I'm already a member of the Fire Prevention Association of Massachusetts and the um, International Association of Arson Investigators. Um, those are both important. One of them gives us uh, updates on the way that the code is changing and current trends in the fire service. And the other one is actually um, pertinent to fire investigation and fire behavior. It helps, gives us more feedback of real world things that are happening um, as they happen. The other monthly meetings are important because that's a place where uh -huh. we can meet a lot of our colleagues and a lot of information gets dis disseminated at a regional level. Um, so we can be better at getting grants and um, staying on top of changes that are happening in the fire service. You know, I'm not going to make every single one of these meetings, but my goal is to make as many as possible. A lot of these meetings might be out east, like the fire prevention meetings might be a half a day or a full day, depending on which, which month it is. Some of the quarterly meetings, um, I've been going to some of the school safety committee meetings. Um, my goal would be to go to um, all of those if I can. Um, we meet with the administrators and come up with plans for incidents that we now by law have to plan for. And the forest wardens meeting is a place to uh, meet with our DCR representatives and stay on top of things that are changing in that realm. Our databases um, right now, I think are all on paper essentially, and I really want to bring things into the modern age of having electronic databases both for our personnel records mm -hmm. um, and our training records. Um, and equipment maintenance. These are all things that are a huge liability for the town that if we ever had an incident and somebody went looking for these records and they can't find them, um, it's a really tough position for the town to be in. Um, payroll, I wanna do our payroll through one of our software programs we have for report writing. And that way we can track um, you know, particular incidents, how much money did a particular incident cost? Like, and, and yeah. much better way of uh, Doing things. Uh, put all our hydrants on the GIS map. Future plans for the department. Um, for me, this is essential to the department because right now we're kind of a crossroads and the and the volunteer mm -hmm. call volunteer services. You all know committees and any other mm -hmm. town jobs, it's hard to get people in here. We've got some new blood right now, some younger folks, which is great. I want to be able to keep those. That's part of the retention thing. But we also need to start recruiting people and one of the places to look at that is at some of the vocational and tech schools so i'd like to try and have a bigger presence there and try and be able to recruit some people um, i want to have a good succession plan in place so that when we have officers that move on or chief that moves on we have somebody that's ready waiting in the wings to come in and it's not a big transition process um, and um, the other two things so three things in red here are osha we need to really start complying with um, OSHA as much as we can. I know it's yeah. pushed off a little bit, but we're still being held to that standard now, yeah. whether they're really cracking down on it at this point or not. Right. Um, Asher training is a um, um, active shooter um, hospital event, event uh, right. response is the acronym, but it's part of an NFPA um, initiative, NFPA 3000, and it's we're mandated to come up with plans to integrate that in our department. So it'd be something we'd have to do with the police department and with the schools and come up with a plan for our individual communities um, in the community planning and right to know laws were mandated. Unfortunately, the other stuff in the yellow, I think is really important as well, but if we have to lock something off, that's probably where it would be. You know, mm -hmm. um, office hours, I think it would be great to try and have some type of rotating office hours. Um, I work a rotating schedule in my fire service, so I'd, I'd like to have some kind of forward-facing mm -hmm. um, person that the, the public can come and see if they have questions about the department. Um, grant writing, I've been very successful in grant writing in the last four years. I've got over $75,000 in grants um, for the town um, right Don't now. Don't that off the list. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's it's not essential. It's <laughs> not when it's not complying um, with the law. Right? Yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's important. I'm, all this stuff is important. 
wouldn't be on the list if it wasn't important. I'm going to continue working on this $165,000 grant for SCBA replacement. So hopefully we will have success with that this year. You know, one of these um, grants can take 20, you know, 30 hours to, yeah. by the time you're done with it, because you're not only writing it, but you're doing follow-ups and all this other stuff that goes with it and research. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if they were an assistant town administrator to help out? And then, um, Collaboration with the PD. We've got a great working relationship with the police, but I would like to uh, build on that and do joint training with them. And the last two things are our fire safety education programs, which I think are very near and dear um, to me. Um, something that I would like to keep pursuing, like our senior safe education, talking to our seniors and helping them with detectors in the homes and um, yeah. the kids in the schools have a more of a presence in the school. So, how much? Like this seems like a lot, but if we look at the job description, I, pretty much everything I just described is all yeah. in the job description. I can't I can't see getting that done in 20 hours a week, honestly. But and and I want to be yeah. realistic that I am employed full time, you know, in my regular job. Right. And to do an excess of 20 hours would be certainly be a challenge. Right. Um no, I, I think I think where honestly, we, I think what you propose here. Like, there's a bunch of towns where it says unk here, right? Unknown. Yeah. And there's a lot of towns that have been getting a, getting away with paying something between five and ten thousand dollars to a fire chief, just cut kind of with maybe not as well defined responsibilities. Well, yeah, we're, we're one of them. And we were, we are one of them yeah. now, and we're transitioning to maybe not being one of those. And I, I'm not trying to to you know, say anything bad about the current fire chief. Um, but you know, he, maybe he felt constrained that that was all the town was willing to pay for this, and mm -hmm. uh, just did what uh, what he could with that. The so I, and I have no problem with the thirty dollars an hour um, for twenty hours a week for doing the kinds of things that you're talking about doing and really doing. Um, uh, really doing the job well, so that's. I mean, that's my that's my thought. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I've got no problem with that either. I think. And the ultimate question is, I mean, I, I don't know how much time this is going to take until we we get into yeah. it. I mean, I know that there's there's a cap yeah. as to how much time any of us can really put into these right. things. But and unfortunately, the, the the workload for me will be heavier on the front and mm, yeah. perhaps a little bit less on the back, like trying to get things right. things schooled up. So. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't no, really know how you want to work work with that. Whether we have a set number of you know, twenty hours a week, and whether it's um, whether it's an hourly right rate yeah. or well, if I can, yeah, uh, I I think that the hourly rate is a better way to go. I think the um, personnel committee recommended it they flat the salary. But I think oh, I, 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 yeah. that I don't remember the details. I thought that, that they had because there was a question as to whether you yeah. call it a salary or a, a, a stipend and how to word the blank. I don't remember that being something as a hill anybody was going to die on. Yeah, you know, no, I just right. I just want to make yeah. sure that that's clarified. And if I have no doubt that you'll be able to fulfill this, but if you can just document the hours, you know, just keep a log of yeah, you know, of course, yeah. of the hours. And, of course, right. and, 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 and what you're working on, and right. obviously, if it if it seems like it's going to be less than that, then right. you know it'll right. be. It'll be, it'll be for the next from, week, this is what you recall. Right here, it does not seem like it's going to be less. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But just you know, if it's going to be a, an hourly position, you can certainly get an idea of what that is, and uh, you know, maybe every six months the. Liaison currently me and could be someone else. Sure. Just meet with you, just just you know, yeah. see what you're doing, what what you're working on. I would hope that we, we would meet more than yeah, more than every six months. Okay. I'd be happy no. with meeting. Well, yeah, every three months would be good, but yeah. I know the way things that's fine. tend to drag out. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. 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 Um, is there anything else that I can help clarify? Um, as far as the, I know that's kind of a, it's not as complicated as the other spreadsheet that you had to look at. But, um, if you have any questions that I can answer or have to answer. Just curiosity, what is your full-time job? I'm a career uh, firefighter paramedic um, in Amherst. Ah, okay. I'm a captain over there. Yep. And um, 
I've been on Amherst for 22 years now. I probably said that at the start, and I I remembered it was Amherst, but I didn't remember the name of the position. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Brian, do you have any? So, so my question is, is one of uh, administration of uh, what the select board decision yeah. is going to be. So, um, if we could get clarification as to, let's say JP puts in ten hours a week. Is it ten times thirty, or or are you, or is it sort of a a flat salary, and it's going to be the same each a period, regardless of how many hours he works? Because that's a different, the, yeah. the difference yeah. in payroll in terms of mm. how we process it. So, because right now the way that the current, the way that the current system for the chief was that there was a stipend and that was split between between the pay periods, and then it was hourly for you know for time spent um hourly for calls for calls yeah yeah i think do it you know, as an hourly assuming 20 hours a week mm -hmm. right and it and then adjust it if it turns out that that the 20 hours is not right for some reason right i mean would that also give the flexibility of this week was 18 hours Next week was 25 hours because those calls, and then the week after that was 17 hours. Um, it's it's if it's really going to routinely be about 20 hours, I know it's easier to just do it 20 hours a, a week and let the let the hours average out. But this is kind of our first time, so maybe yeah. it would be um, we could try it for a year. Yeah, um, I think, you know, try it for a year. Some sort of adjustment if that 20 hours a week is way off somehow. Yeah. And you make an, uh, an adjustment for the next year and make an, you know, either you know, decisional payment or something to cover the three hours that we're working. Yeah. Or it's or, a you know. hourly rate, but with an annual not to exceed cap. Right. Right. There's a there's a budget. There's, yeah. there's an amount yeah. that we're going to budget based right. on total yeah. hours, but yeah. there's yeah. also the amount of how much right how much we would pay him. Yeah. Right. I mean, three sounds good, but I don't think he's going to take yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I I think if we assume twenty hours per week as a payroll target. Yeah. The, but the, then the, track the, your hourly and then, track your hours and we'll match those up and, every time and, you guys meet. Yeah, we can but I, I just think it's easier if we assume to break it down evenly week by week. Is that um Brian, does that work? Are we making that he said Brian? No, uh, well, I think I just see. sort of is it is it Hourly and, and JP will submit a timesheet and we'll pay him for the hours he works that pay period, or is it a lump sum divided by the number of pay periods? I, I think the, yeah. the, those are sort of the two payroll options that we need to do one or the other to yeah. process. Can you do the lump sum but then track the hours anyway as a learning? I guess a, yeah, because you can require whatever. Whatever the, the board yeah. wants to require. Yeah. Just because, as Joy said, it's our first time on yeah. a date on this. Right. And, and I don't want it to be cumbersome. Yeah. Um, if that would be possible for you to do without it becoming. Yeah. One more thing. There, there's there's going to be there's going to be growing pains going through this. Right. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want to see what you're getting for your your time. I, right. I respect yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, just it's just a big increase over what we've been paying for before. sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll document it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I, I guess I guess <laughs> I mean, which one do you think is, is easier? Yeah. For yeah. the folks who have to do payroll. Well, I think we want to track them either way. Yeah, we're uh, I think you're asking way. JP to submit a timesheet. Yeah. Like like so let's like just, all the other department heads do. So let's just do it that way. Um right, so yeah, saying, I, I just said just Treated the way you would treat another department. Um, yeah, and then the, even in the past, if it, it maybe hasn't been treated that way, but was there any reason not to treat JP like any other department head? And do other department heads turn in timesheets? Yeah, everybody turns it in time. Okay. Well, I mean, well, um, we, but but the hours on that timesheet. 
totaled over 40. So his so the expectation would be that his hours were totaled to 20. Correct. And it would be okay if that was a, an average. Lynn says you can treat it like town right. clerk, but there's a salary that still require a timesheet. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh. I think basically what we've been yeah. oh. hammering our way around. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. So that, <laughs> that being said, could there be one like you just said, one week that was 16 and one week that was 24? So I think that's inevitable. Yeah, you would still get yeah. the same pay no matter what. I mean, town clerk is very um, some weeks are a lot less intensive and other weeks are much more intensive. So mm. but on the average, it was a certain amount of hours. So the only thing we would be looking for for the timesheet is so that next year when you're having this discussion, you'll have the backup to it that says, this is how many hours I put in over the year. For and sure. then, you know, but basically you take what your salary would be for the um, 20 hours at $30 an hour, divide it by 26 pays, and that's what you would get paid. Right. I think we, we know the solution. Thank you, Lynn. You're welcome. Okay. Do you need any other? Guidance from us, and Aaron, I guess this is this is still going for the finance committee as well. I'll be I'll be back. Yeah, and we'll see you again Thursday. See you again on Thursday, right? Yeah. Okay. I I think what you shared here was is very important for the yeah. finance yes. committee. I I agree. Okay. I was going to ask you what are you doing for that amount of money, and then you came out with the <laughs> yeah. Whoa, well, okay. it's a valid. It's a well, valid. I feel like a lot of this actually, it's a valid question. You can be doing your job. Yeah. Right. A lot of this came up in the prior discussion too. I think. But I like this is like nice and organized, and the color coding is really helpful too. People like color. Yeah. All right. Thank you yeah, for your maybe time. New color, you. Maybe new colors for Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, poor Jim Ross got home before we got our right. capital improvement. Thank you. So. Yeah, um, and that. And I don't know that I think we we talked about yeah, that. I just wanted to have yeah. that on the agenda for 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 Jim. I think the okay the select boards at least initially recommending that both those projects be funded with CLFRF money. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I'll clarify again what both of those projects are: the library project, the right? window and chimney repairs, okay. and the electrical and plumbing safety upgrades. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we're getting up to eight o'clock here. So let's see if we can, I know a lot of the other things will be fairly short, but maybe we can see what uh, uh, what Donna is here for. That's new business 7A to discuss input from the way the historical commission in regard to a possible historic preservation restriction if the center school is ever sold. So, I'm sure that ever. <laughs> It made me I don't yeah, know. It says is when the century. I would like to say yeah, my skepticism. So well, Brian, Brian, it was a. I mean, I Brian, think at this point we're looking at a rental. Maybe favorite town administrator ever. Sorry, my second favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, the committee finished its work. The visioning committee in March of 2020, and the town the select board opened it up for the re the request for the lease last November, and it was so really. We haven't right. tried very no, hard. No, no, oh, <laughs> no, the first one I, I was would like seven. to strike that ever and the, be positive. No, 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 this, <laughs> no, I don't. I, he's blushing. I think but, you're you're <laughs> you're characterizing it badly. In between, we did have an RFP go yeah. out to sell it. Wow. And nobody wanted to buy it. We we'll sell it for a dollar, and let, this has been the last year or two, right? No, Didn't no, we send we out? Not send something. No. What? What are sure, all the? Sure, what, are the what are the RFPs for then? That was. Well, we sent out that was the lead. Oh, oh, sorry. We sent out in November. I got that. January. I got it. Sorry. Your face in February. I got it completely. I got it completely backwards. Sorry. It's almost eight o'clock, and it's it is. not so, at dinner so yet. You asked, <laughs> Have, have any of you looked at um, what I the materials that I sent on Sunday? Sorry, no, ma'am, not. Why do you have? I did. Okay. <laughs> I did. I am skimming the summary right now. Okay, so um, 
shall I talk us through it? Not the yes, page right. draft, but the memo that I wrote. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, we agreed on February 28th that we would um, investigate the possibility of, of issuing an RFP for sale of the building with a preservation restriction. Um, and after that, uh, I mean, we, the Historical Commission, I'm speaking on behalf of the whole committee, and if Judy hasn't gone over to fame, she's on the screen. Judy, yeah, Judy's um, on the screen. Very concrete, personally. Um, we consulted with the folks at the Massachusetts Historical Commission because any preservation restriction that's put on a building in this state must be approved by the Massachusetts Historical Commission, regardless of whether they hold it or someone else holds it. Um, uh, he, Michael Steinitz, was very helpful and gave us three templates. The only thing that's not helpful is that they were all provided in PDF format. And so I spent about half a day figuring out how to extract them into Word format. And now I know how to do oh, that. Yeah. So I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I figured you're going to, uh, not that your time is going to be required for this. Um, and in, and we also looked, of course, at the preservation agreement that is in place for Waverly Town Hall. Um, which is about this length. Um, so we followed the format of the three templates. It doesn't always seem to be the most logical sequence, but these whereases are in the same. This is the, the way the Massachusetts Historical Commission wants these documents to be organized. Mm -hmm. um, and the main points uh, are that um, the purchaser would agree to maintain the exterior of the school to the greatest extent possible. We decided, uh, we the historical commission whenever I say we, that there was, there's no point in to put any restriction on the interior of the building. So in that case, this is different from the town hall restriction, mm -hmm. which protects exterior, interior property, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, should I go on? Um, sure. Um, yeah. That the purchaser would agree to follow the secretary the, the standards for historic preservation, which is the way that person can qualify for historic tax credits and grants. And I should say, just by a point of reference, that although the East School does not have a preservation restriction on it, remember the town didn't sell that school right. district school. Right. School I think just sat through the CBA meeting with uh, Bob O'Beer, who's doing that restriction, doing that work. They will comply. They will essentially do the same level of compliance because they would lose all the state tax credits mm -hmm. that they're getting otherwise. So my point is really that's not extraordinary. Um, the historical commission would be deputized <laughs> to oversee this on behalf of the town. And that's really analogous to the way the Conservation Commission is overseeing the way the Center Woods project. Mm -hmm. You have to expect inspect at least once a year. Uh, it's quite standard that the purchaser agrees not to obstruct the view of the building from the public mm -hmm. right away. Understood. Um, and then the uh, I talked to Michael Steinitz about the milk bottle, which is you know, a peculiar situation of not being owned by the town, but being on town property. And he advised us to protect the milk bottle in this preservation agreement. Um, so we drafted some text about that, which is pretty straightforward, just really letting the historical society have access to it that doesn't get in the way of the owners. And, um, and also in exchange, Having the new owners agree, understand that they can't use the milk bottle for marketing purposes uh, without the historical, without the owner's approval. Um, so this is this would be a draft, and it would be um, it would be included in the RFP as a draft. In other words, whoever bought the building might want to negotiate aspects of it. That's mm -hmm. quite standard. Um, but before that, what we have to do is have a discussion here. The Massachusetts Historical Commission must review it. They are predicting mm -hmm. 30 to 60 days. They are not the fastest group on the planet. Um, 
But I'm hopeful that since we really use the templates they provide, it, you know, almost mm -hmm. with very few changes, that it wouldn't drag on. Um, Brian has advised me that town council would review it after that. I'm assuming that's so we don't have to pay town council twice. Yeah. yeah. And then we put this where we are. Um, the other things we're doing, just so that you know, is um, I've been collecting lists of other small towns that don't have, you know, preservation and planning staffs or departments where historical commissions um, oversee this kind of agreement. And I've got about eight so far. Um, and we're also collecting, and I can, once we get past this, spend some more time doing this, collecting um, RFP documents that seem really good to us so that Brian can see mm -hmm. those and we um there's one I yeah. particularly like like a resource right now I can't remember what town it comes from. Judy may remember. <laughs> no, we're we're all tired. No. Town that starts with R or W. <laughs> oh, oh. One of them. One of those W's maybe. Yeah. So that's where we are. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. It sounds like you've drummed up a bunch of resources that are going to be helpful in this process. And with those, the tax credits will make the difference to whether a builder can actually do something mm -hmm. profitably with the building. And our willingness to sell the building. Yes. For a song, I think. Yeah. You know, that I think the East School sold for $1,000 or maybe $100. I mean, it had one in it. And and I think, I think it was another, another benefit to the town of doing this is that it will put uh, building a property which are assessed at five hundred seventy six thousand dollars back on the tax rolls, and that will happen immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can answer any questions you have. Uh, I'm eager, we are eager, of course, to be able to move on because the, the various review processes mm. can't start. Right. So what what are next steps? Sending this to Mass Historical Commission for their I, I, I think if with your with your mm -hmm. blessing, um Brian, I might like you to just take a pass through it, you know, and just, yep. and we might have to clean up a couple of things where I just couldn't bear going to the D book and putting all the detail in oh, I see. to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. We, yeah. There's not a lot of that. Fill in the yeah. blank stuff, but there's a little bit. So this can go before we have anybody who's responded to an RFP. We can have this as a draft, and then the 60 to 90 days. No, no, no. no. Oh. We, we, we can't issue a, a draft preservation restriction agreement until Mass Historical Commission has. has oh, oh, okay. It. But yeah, that's that's the end of the memo. So I that will delay putting out an right, RFP. Right, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and the RFP process requires the requires the, the town to state any restrictions that will be included in the sale. So okay. So we should get this out the door ASAP yeah. yeah. to them, right? To them. Okay. And and I will do my best to impress on them that that you use their templates and yeah. Yeah. Right. okay. All right. That's a lot of work you guys did. Thank you. Thank you. We had some good conversations and we walked around the building <laughs> and looked at it again. <laughs> Picked up slates that had fallen on the ground and worried about them. Um, <laughs> oh, she's so glad somebody wasn't standing there when they fell. <laughs> okay. So what? How, yeah. Does this require well, I don't, a vote to send this to? Yeah, I don't think this requires a vote. But if you want us to vote to send the take the next steps. I don't think it required, right? To yeah. review it. That no, it was, just wanted our black. Yeah, the, the item was a discussion item, so it wasn't that. I don't think it requires a vote. Okay. Yeah. Judy, did you have anything Thank you want to add? I see you're there. No, I think Donna summarized <laughs> things very well. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, as it is after eight o'clock, if there's no more discussion on this, I'd like to uh, get back to some of the items we skipped that. Really need to get done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Donna. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Um, all right. This one we need to make sure we have an official vote on the record under old business number one, number A. 
Discuss and vote to approve entering the statewide opioid settlement agreements with defendants Teva, Allergan, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. Um, this is the item where, well, uh, if we're going to sue separately, we should not do this. But if we have no plans to sue separately, we should take this settlement. And I thought we, we discussed it and voted at a previous meeting, but um, we're going to do it again just to make double sure we really voted on it. I would. I move we to motion. approve entering into the statewide open opioid agreements with defendants Teva, Allegan, CBS, Walgreens, and Walmart. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. B. To confirm the date for the 2023 annual town meeting, confirmed this Tuesday, May 23rd, 2023, at 6 p.m. Um, I think we can confirm that. Do we need a vote to confirm it? I think you previously voted. I think we previously said, voted. But then there was some discussion. And then, then there was discussion. Yeah, there was a little discussion, but it looks like uh, that's that's not moving. Okay. Uh, next, to discuss updates to the Hurley Park Accessibility Project and vote on using contingency funds to pay for increased project expenses. So, yeah, right. so, um, so the Hurley Park Accessibility Project, that's the restroom renovations and uh, the site improvements yeah. for uh, the parking lot in the driveway. Um, so what's driving, really what's driving the budget up is mm -hmm. the cost of asphalt. Um, mm -hmm. So the original project budget was around, well, the, the restroom in the parking lot work when the budget was put together when we applied, and this was probably two and a half years ago, was yeah. 107, was, was let's say $108,000. Now, costs of, of asphalt have increased significantly. Um, in the way that, the, the way that we had to, um, in the way that we had to accept the grant, we had to appropriate the full amount of the money. Um, yeah. But um, our intent was to use the grant, uh, the park grant and CPA money, which mm -hmm. subsequently was appropriated at town meeting. So um, mm -hmm. we have this really, we have this 107,000 that is sitting in this account that's for the project. Um, but there was never a clear intent of us to, to use that money for the project. Right. The money's appropriated, it's there. Um, and I guess, I think that's what Keith and I are, are asking the board is whether we could use a portion of that money will have um, the asphalt, the the asphalt bids will be our due April 26th. So we'll have an amount, um, mm -hmm. you know, we could, I could tell you the estimate that he previously gave me and he, that he recently got from from the the local, uh, uh, yeah. whatever it is, all states or Warner Brothers, I think there might be the same company now, um, was even higher than than what we had originally anticipated. So mm -hmm. those costs are are high right now. And that's really what's driving um, the increased costs. You know, we looked at permeable pavement um, originally yeah. to try to to try to minimize the impact of yeah. um, to try to keep this the, the footprint yeah. of the project smaller. And that was the triple yeah. uh, <laughs> what it, what it was for for regular pavement. So um, that's what we're asking for is that, you know, the money's there, it's appropriated, um, but it, it's- Right, it's, but we it was kind of under the condition that we probably were going to use it. Right. Um, and that's, so uh, do you know how much of that 107,000 might need to be, like roughly? Um, now, we were guessing, I think somewhere around 41,000, but I'm uh, gonna, I would say probably another 10 to 15 based on just the recent asphalt bit that he got, the asphalt quote that he got. Wow. Um, it's gone up significantly from when that original estimate was provided for the grant application. Mm, that's not quite half, but it's a good chunk. It's not like, oh, $7,000 or something. Yeah. Something like that. Is can we go back to CPC and try to cover some of this money? Um, the timing of that probably doesn't work in terms of the park grant. The park grant needs to be 
We need to do June 30th, right? Uh, it need, we need to be done by the uh, pretty much the middle of May. Um, but for some reason, reimbursements are due June 1st. Um, so we need to be closed out by June in order to be eligible for that reimbursement. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I I understand that, that we would need to use this appropriation for that. But can essentially CPC money be used in arrears retroactively? Since yeah. it should be a CPA um, eligible I, project, I, I don't know. Um, Judy probably knows, but uh, that'd be a question that Judy's that, yeah. Judy Scott. <laughs> that's a question that we would have to. Okay, but I would just right. Yep. Yeah, I, it doesn't seem well. Yeah, I, I'm pessimistic that that would. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not about that. I'm just thinking that we're checking that. Yeah, it, can CPA monies be used retroactively? For things that have been spent that you know, have to be spent otherwise. If we you know if we don't do it, it's just gonna cost more later. No, no, I'm not saying so I don't, I'm no, no, our decision though to yeah. here is to right. That's what we're supposed to be right. discussing to vote on using contingency funds to pay for increased project expenses. Right. And yeah. so we're kind of going from slowly, it's has been actually been happening over time, right? That we've known about the price increases for everything. Um, so this is not exactly new news, but it's 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 a decision we have to consciously make. And I I guess that summarizes my feelings: is if we don't do it now, it's going to just cost more later. Yeah, I think we, we should do, do it. Do we need to authorize a specific number, or uh, whatever, think, or whatever is necessary to cover? So we'll come, I mean, we'll come back with. Uh, with the actual bid, mm -hmm. and we'll actually have an amount then. Oh, okay. Six. So, so we don't have to vote today, but you no. got kind of our. But if you if you told me this is not a possibility, then I would want to tell Keith mm -hmm. that he needs to. Right. Okay. Uh, tell Keith to get a bid. Okay. Yeah. But get a bid, please. It, it, we suspect it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. We got this much left on the agenda, folks. Okay. To discuss and set the date of a special town meeting and review and approve the warrant for the next special town meeting. Um, I understand from emails we have a date that we can have the, all of us and our moderator on May 2nd at 7.30. And would that be here, do you think? I think that would be here in Fort Sandy Lane, right? Yeah, I, and ideally we would have a select board meeting before then. And we'd start our select board meeting at 6. We and be done by seven twenty-five. Be done by seven. No, if we somehow aren't done by seven twenty-five, that hardly ever happens. But if we were, we would stop at like seven twenty-eight. Uh, suspend, around, suspend the meeting. Suspend the back. meeting. Have the special town meeting, and then continue with the select board meeting after, if that's necessary. So that's the that's the plan. Yeah. Um, and I did not look at. Um, all the articles, but I'll look at them really quickly. The unpaid bills one, I remember so that. Paper. Um, what is the 20,000? Uh, yeah. What was that originally appropriate? For? So these are these are these are from retained earnings um, for the water department. So this is these are actually funds that um, were appropriated for a pump house generator. Um, in 2015 and 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and what's what's happened is that um you get the newest one, the new oh, one. There it is. Um what's happened is that they they oh. had some uh mandates by Mass DP that they needed to fulfill. One of them was a sanitary survey or the capital improvement, but the sanitary survey, which is a capital improvement plan that's what um, they had to hire a consultant to do. So they wanted to, and then they paid that consultant out of their budget. So they wanted to use this money. Um, it's listed as operating expenses, but that's their request. And that's number one you're talking about? No, that's number three. Number three. Yeah. Number one is Kate's request. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's all cost more. This it's year. all, right, right. Unexpended funds. 
So that's, this is a repurposing article. It's a repurposing of already. Yes, they have $20,000 in an account that they want to do something yeah. with it. So that's the total that's in that account? Okay. And then Article 4 is a... Um, so nothing in the Article 3 says what... Oh, no, there it is. Large oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Article 4... Article 4 is a uh, peculiarity of Mass General Law 30B, which it restricts uh, contract uh, contracts for services to three years unless authorized by a both of the legislative body. So, so what we're asking for in the RFP is that somebody, as part of their proposal, that they provide a 20-year OM um, agreement. So um oh, okay. Operation agreements. Yeah. So we would we would need. Legislative approval to, to to enter into that. So it's just trying to plan ahead and okay. Okay, we still set a big special town meeting um, May second at what time? Seven thirty. Uh, I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Then we just sign one of these. Okay. All right. Twenty third. Twenty third. No, that that May second for the May second. May second for the special, special for the special town meeting. Right. Twenty third for the for the annual meeting. All right. Uh, next to review, discuss, and approve the special event application for the fun run to be held by the way the PTO at the elementary school May seventh. Um, yep. Brian's they've gone through. They, they've gone through all the um, hoops of the, you know, the various. You know, get your approval from the fire department. Is and everybody. They've yep. done all of that. Or is that uh, some of that still pending? Uh, I believe they have everything. That's what okay. Because yeah, the package is pretty thick. Sixteen pages of our yeah. afterwards. Um, yeah. Yes, I don't think. I would do. entertain a motion. Move we approve the fun run on May seventh. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Um, uh, to consider an employee request to be compensated for remaining leave time for which they are ineligible due to a change in position within the town. Um, I think just because your position changes, you shouldn't lose your leave time. You're still working for the town. Yeah. Is that right? It's not that you don't, that you lose it, or is this they want to um, be so paid they, for the lead time because they can't use it? Because they can't use it. And how much do we know how much this would cost? Um, five thirty one and six fifty. There it is. Um, and there's plenty of um, oh, there's plenty of plenty of funds in the. In the mm -hmm. relevant budget, that okay. Right. I I have no objection. No objection. Right, no. we approve the employee request to be compensated for leave time. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, liaison updates. Uh, we had two meetings with uh, potential providers of. Uh, feasibility studies for the highway department, and then we'll meet with Keith again and work with him. I have no updates. I feel like I had a boo meeting, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was it was before our last meeting, so I don't think I have an update um, to contribute. How about you, Brian? Um, for town administrator updates. Yep. yep. Uh, town office solar project. Um, we had a site visit because uh, the RFP is out. Um, we had one person attend. It was not a mandatory site visit because a lot of the mm -hmm. stuff could be done. Right. I think via desktop. So, um, so that's out. That is due back um, the twenty sixth, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've handed out the RFP to around 15 mm -hmm. um, people. So 
Um, hopefully we'll get yeah, the 20, April 26th. Um, hopefully we'll get a number of responses for that. Um, and once we have those responses, we'll have to put together a small yeah. committee. Um, uh, yeah. So, and Paul did tell me he would do that. He would work on that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's out there. Um, Highway Garage Feasibility Study. Fred talked about that. We met with uh, Weston, I don't know if it's Weston or Weston Samson, and then um, K, KT Architects. I forgot um, the name. Yeah. Yeah. And they both had slightly different approaches to, to, uh, to the process. Um, one was a little bit more formalized and one was a little bit less formalized. More ad hoc. Yeah. Um, so it, I think just we need to have a discussion about what the right approach is. One. So there's really, at the end of the day, we need to go through a designer selection process, which is mm -hmm. a real a, a formal process that, that's laid out in mass law, mm -hmm. uh, mass general law. Um, and then eventually we need to go through that. The, the approach of Quest and Samson was more of like, we'll, we'll do a study to let you know what you need, but we still need to go through that process. So we got to determine what we, you know what the right steps are. Um, not, not sorry, right steps, but the steps that we want to go. Um, and the last one I listed here was there's a neighborhood partnership. There's a regional housing grant um, that the mm -hmm. town has. And the part that's uh, for Waitley, it's the it's the uh, wetland delineation of the Mayo mm -hmm. and the conceptual plan. And we had the we had a site visit there this um, last week. Um, we met out there with the the, the wetland scientist and mm -hmm. some of their uh, planner people. So we had a good discussion about um, you know what what's practical to, to have on the site. It looks like what they had on their maps and what they sort of determined in the field was that, or what they confirmed in the field was that it's likely that the only area that's outside of the buffer, uh, outside mm -hmm. of the wetland buffer, the riverfront protection area, is pretty much where the foundation is now going towards the road. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously restricted activities that you can do within so many feet uh, in the riverfront protection area, but it's going to be it, it's going to be pretty restrictive, I think. Mm. In terms of the, the usable, right. unregulated space. So, so it would be, if it's going to go for housing, it's going to be a small housing unit. Yeah, it's a, it's a. Uh, I mean, like we're, space. Yeah, yeah. it's it's got a. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Um, and, and they're they're obviously finalized that and get us some conceptual plans and some more more detailed plans in terms of what they think is a buildable area. Okay. Um, but um, last thing we got um, um, noticed that the town uh, was awarded a Meta grant, which is the uh, uh, municipal energy technical assistance grant that was for the fleet EV assessment. Yeah. Um, so um, I need to do paperwork for that. But again, that's the that's to work with. Um, I forget which company uh, sent in the proposal. I want to say Weston and Samson again in Rivermore Energy. Um, you know, to help the town come up with a plan to transition from mm -hmm. um, uh, from our current fleet to um, right. an electric fleet. So um, I don't know that that doesn't really answer our question in terms of the F-150 that we're going to have to right. deal with, but um, it might provide us. It, yeah, it might provide us a reason to wait till next year. Right. So. Yeah, so, um, so there's that grant as well. And that, okay. Our next meeting is probably going to be May 2nd, then, or do we need another meeting in April? I mean, other than our, our meetings with the finance committee, I think I, I don't see any reason why it can't be May 2nd. Okay, um, there's not much on the agendas right now, so there's no okay. time sense. Yeah. Okay, oh my gosh, it's unusual for us to have a two and a half hour meeting. Yeah, so thanks everybody for. Keep it up with the energy. I would entertain move to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good night, everybody.